I gave a example earlier in the group about semantics and Emma Young got very interested in semantics and um, in, in language uh, etymology, not entomology, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so if I say the word yacht, what's the vision that comes into your mind? Yacht means small boat, but is it a rowboat or is it, you know, um, Prince Awalid bin Talal's yacht in Monte Carlo, you know, and, or is it Donald Trump's yacht, whatever it is, right? And so every word in the language has a different connotation to every human being, right? <laughs> and, and so when I, as a reader in Tarot, read through the cards, and I can do it very fluently when I when I brush up on it. Um, but when I read through the cards, everybody hears something different. Okay, because if I say yacht, she's thinking about a rowboat, and you're thinking about Prince oh, okay. Al Walid's boat, and There's and a it lot goes of latitude in the yeah, works. The right, and it, and it goes right on from there. So. The point is, and this is the way astrology works too, so mm -hmm. it always connects. <laughs> Might not, you'll read the thing and right. you're like, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, but it's right. the bottom third maybe that applies. Right, you, and it, right. It captured something and it's, in you? And it's a synchronicity too with astrology. I'm right? too fussy for that because I look at the other two thirds and I say, <laughs> throw it all out. <laughs> no, but, but look, if you, if you read the astrology co column, Twice a year, it would hit you exactly. This got me exactly. And what okay. happens, what, the way your psyche works, is that you forget about it. You forget about the ones that didn't work, and you remember numinously, okay, in, in the young context of the divine, numinously, the two in a year that get Those your situation. Those guideposts. That this is real. You know, so there's validity in that. Yeah. There is validity in it. It's worked for 5,000 years, man. I mean, how many do you take out? But some you hang on to for a minute because you're like, oh, that really speaks to you. Right. And yeah. some might be a very bad translation. Right. Most of them aren't even fortunes Are there, anymore. Yeah, anymore. You know, tarot and astrology are also like that. Some, some things cause you to have a numinous experience with them. Let's and, talk about that for a second. I have a, okay. A little deeper question about that. When you have a synchronicity or a series of synchronicities that are matching exactly, and then suddenly they don't match, so they lose their numina. Right. Okay. And then the numina comes back. Chris, mm -hmm. what's going on with that? It seems to like be. I don't know. Um, it's you have not, to ask yourself that. Well, I mean, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's. Um, this is where this is where the scientific mind says it's not it's not consistent. <laughs> this this is not scientific though. You understand? I know that. I understand. We're talking. I I got corrected about a week ago. I used the term irrational rather than rational, and and some Jungian poobah said I should use the term transrational, which is uh, which. You know, because because yeah, like because he he says that you know the point. Okay, here's here's the point. In statistics, I can tell you that this hole in the ground that I put rocks in has an average size of of rocks that are in the hole, right? But um, is that correct? Is is the statistic correct? You know, so let's say I've got a hole in the ground and it's the size of this table and I've filled it with rocks. Now, are they, regardless of what size they are, let's say they're this size, but they might be pebbles, but let's say they're this size. So now you say, um, okay, what's the average size of those rocks? Well, you could weigh them, you could check their mass, and, and based on that, you could know the average size of the rocks, but does that describe any one rock? No, it doesn't. And um, is the hole full? No, it isn't, because if you started with rocks this size, um, then I can throw pebbles in on top of that, 
And is that full? Well, no, because I can put sand in on top of that, and there'll be a lot of sand that goes in there. And and then is that full? And well, no, because you can fill it Air up with pocket. no, you can <laughs> fill it up with water, ah. right? Mm -hmm. And and so and so, what does full mean? And what what's average mean? And science o always depends on averages, statistical models, right? And so what we're talking about is the water, <laughs> right? And and so if if all the all the big clumps in your psyche are like rocks or sand, I don't care which one, but I always thought I had rocks in my head. <laughs> <laughs> you know, whatever it is, then it, if but if it's like whatever size, then you can still fill it up with water and there's something there. Well our psyche is like that. Okay, and so you know we have certain things in our psyche but we can fill them up with something else. We can put water into them, right? And so the point is that, that this group and Dr. Young's work is about the transrational. It's not about the scientific method. It's not about statistics. It's about what is between all those things that hold us together. Okay, the fundamental things that hold us together, right? But it comes down to. I mean, is science. A pattern, a pattern. Of when does it become a non-pattern, a non-pattern? And what? So if, if you attach a meaning to a pattern of the events, things that happen. Well, so that you can understand it in a certain way. But is a Higgs boson? Certainly, you would have to say that a Higgs boson is you know a rational identifiable particle in the universe right we've now identified it at, at, at CERN and so now we know that there are Higgs bosons right um, but do Higgs bosons follow rules most definitely they do okay they're you know you can statistically predict when you're gonna find one right and that's what they're doing at CERN they're they're hard to find, but they can find them, right? And so, uh, but still, there's something holding us all together, even the Higgs bosons. Okay, I mean, really, think about that. That's that's sort of a mind well, blower. I asked you about a pattern and then a disruption of the pattern and then a reestablishment of the pattern. You said, well, ask yourself. So well, what I, does that mean exactly? Well, I, you have to ask yourself, but basically, in all chaos, there is uh, a pattern. Okay, there there is there is order, right? In all chaos, and all the way to everything in the universe, everything in the universe is following a certain pattern, right? From the, from the Big Bang on. And so physicists are getting closer and closer to the cosmological starting point. But in the end, they're never going to explain how the Big Bang happened, right? They can't. It's, not, it's unexplainable. And, you know, whether you believe that God is... Uh, some creature that's watching everything you do, all 7.5 billion of us, there, God's checking us out all the time, or whether God just rolled the dice and said, let there be a world. Um, and, you know, good luck. These are the rules, figure them out. <laughs> you know, once you evolve enough to figure them out, then figure them out. <laughs> right. so you're basically saying it's a mystery. Well, my question is... It is, it is a mystery. And, and so this is about mystery, okay? Dr. Young's work is about the mystery in the end. But um, didn't, he, well, when we were talking about the arc and the circle, and didn't he have some thought about yin yang? Because I'm thinking if you have periods of synchronicity and then where it drops off, isn't that the opposite, like a breath? I'm talking about specific like instance of synchronicity, not just well, a, 
not a not just a am I having synchronicities because I keep having them. I have them every week, mm -hmm. right? And it has to do with emotion, according to Jung. It has to right. do with the, your intensified emotion. Right. It, it well, synchronicities enough. have to do with a, a readiness in your psyche for some to see some, to see some. Ca a causal connection to see some connection with something else okay it's a readiness in your mind to see something else so you're ready for it and all of a sudden boom there it is okay so and, it's and that's all created in a sense otherwise if yeah. you're not prepared for it you it seems to be happen. and it's dreamlike in some well ways. it's Even a, it's part of reality it seems dreamlike it is somewhat dreamlike in the sense that... I have that, a good example, but it's right. a long example, but well, happened I'm, to me a couple of weeks ago. Well, you're welcome to talk about it. Well, I was walking around my usual circuit on the weekend. Now, maybe I'm making more into this than I think, but I interpret it this way. Okay. So I'm walking around doing my exercise on the weekend at the university. Mm -hmm. And I stop at the park bench every now and then, so I pull off. And I go in the little park and I sit at the park bench. And just, I'm in silence and just enjoying the silence and nature. And I noticed there was a little book under the bench. So I picked, pulled out the book and I noticed that people had written things in there. And some of them, because they're college students, they're, they have difficulties and they're, they're homesick and they have relationship problems and so forth. So I thought, well, I'll write something in the book. So I wrote in a book how often I'm walking around the university on my exercise and cars will stop, people ask me for directions. And I say, well, I give them directions, but I hope they can find their way to where they're going. I don't know, you know if they ever made it there. So then I, met, then I sort of went into, I morphed into kind of an analogy that, hey, if you're lost, you know, ask for directions. People don't ask me for directions about life. Mm -hmm. miserable. I think that's kind of odd. So ask for directions about life if you have questions. And that was all it was and then I signed it with my little initial, my little symbol mm -hmm. and then went home. And the next day I came out and I was walking around and I came around to the park again. And right at that instant I sensed something on my left side and there's this long gray car that pulls up next to me. It's like a station wagon. And the guy says, hey, can you help me? I'm, lo I'm lost. I'm trying to find my way. And so, <laughs> so well, this isn't it. This isn't the whole thing. So I, come around. Thing, so I came around and he, he showed me his cell phone. He said, I'm going to an orientation, uh, an orienteering class. This is where you have to use a compass to find your direction. It's very sophisticated. Mm -hmm. It's difficult to do. So he's like, good at this, okay? So he remarks a couple of times, in two separate instances in the conversation, that isn't it ironic? I'm going to an orienteering I'm, course. But I'm going to an orienteering course and I have to stop and ask you for directions. <laughs> and so I laughed with him and I walked, started walking down the street. Within five minutes, because I'm attuned to this now, I thought, what is that telling me? It's telling me this is my, my own interpretation, okay? That what I wrote in that book is I am giving someone a direction to stop and ask for directions and yet I don't even know where I'm going. In other words, I interpreted it. I interpreted it as he was me teaching me something. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like you created an opening. Yeah, you I put created it out it. there, it's and like, you actually. Well, I'm not even asking for direction. Mm -hmm. It was like giving me the hint. No, but you are. I mean, when you're coming to this class, you're asking for directions in some way. You're asking for a direction to wholeness. That's what we're working on here. <laughs> Aren't you? I mean, Am I? That's the question. <laughs> well, I don't know. According I mean, to him, you have to answer. That. Well, you'll have to answer that. But there you go. But I mean, but you know, Dr. Yeah, Jung's work, like, oh, as I said in the first class, is is individuation and about finding yourself, right? And I don't claim to know the right answer, um, but 
we're all working on that project of finding, you know, having a life of wholeness.